Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and it is an honor and a pleasure to be here with you today. Dare to Dream has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award, was just awarded the best radio and podcast show by Coalition of Visionary Resources, and Welp Magazine listed Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger in their magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. So thank you for being one of those listeners. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. You can find out about the beautiful energy work they do out in the world. Go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R.com or accessconsciousness.com. Today's show, I have the pleasure of featuring Suzanne Ross. She's a spiritual life coach and Suzanne delivers healing through remote healing through past life regression from her psychic gifts. And I am Debbie Dashinger. And I, what I, what do I do out in the world? I'm a visibility media expert. I teach, there's the beautiful Suzanne. I teach business owners, coaches, entrepreneurs, and speakers, the time effective steps to write a highly engaging book, turn each author's book, I have a company that turns author's books into a guaranteed international bestseller, and I do all the heavy lifting. And the third leg of my visibility hub is how to be interviewed. I teach the ultimate visibility formula. I'm working with people right now on how to get interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. Because folks, if you're being interviewed or interested in being interviewed, you're not moving the needles. You're not selling out workshops, you're not selling books, you're not getting new clients or getting new people in your database. It's a problem, but it's a common problem. So let me show you how. If you'd like to start simple, I've got a gift for you. And this is everything about how you can be interviewed and write your book out in the world. Go to debbie-dashinger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. This episode is a conversation to explore limitless possibilities, multidimensionality, missing time, and the paranormal. My guest, Suzanne Ross, has dedicated her life to awakening and ascension of humanity through her book, shows, events, TV network, and nonprofit organization. She's reached millions with her message of hope for humanity and a new earth. And Suzanne speaks worldwide and has been seen on Gaia TV and featured on the Global Peace Tribe. You can learn more about her at SuzanneRossTranscendence.com. And I welcome Suzanne Ross to Dare to Dream. Hi, it's so great to have you here. Hi, Debbie. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm so delighted to be part of your amazing podcast and congratulations on all of those awards. That's so impressive. Ah, oh, thank you very much. I've been doing it 15 years. So I think with time <laughs> comes due diligence and some recognition. I'm super grateful for it. It lets other people find this and find people like you. So I want to start with you have really dedicated the last decades of your life to awakening, to ascension, the paranormal and the supernatural. Yummy. I love all of that. Is there a backstory for you of personal awakening and ascension? Did you come from one arena and shift for some reason into the other? Yes. So I used to be a corporate executive wow. living on the East Coast, and I just felt incredibly misaligned with my true calling, displaced in the East Coast where I was at, and it was starting to show up in many physical, mental symptoms. Mm. I was having anxiety attacks and mm. I had eczema all over my skin. And I just walked out into the kitchen one day and said, there has to be more meaning and purpose to life than this. Fighting brutal traffic, going to work, fighting brutal politics, fighting traffic, coming home, having dinner, getting up, doing it over and over and over again. I knew there had to be more meaning and purpose to my life. And I just felt like this isn't what I signed up for. And about that time, my parents called to invite me to the desert of Southern California. And I knew that's what I needed was a break from it all. So I went to visit them and out in the desert, 
I woke up one morning and I just felt compelled to run to this mountain behind their house. And I ran up to the top of the mountain, threw my arms up to the sky. And I just said, I am miserable in the extreme and see no way out. And in that moment, I felt this absolute calm wash over me. It felt like the air around me was hugging me. And I felt surrounded by this brilliant white light. And out of the light came a voice and it said, can't you see you've come home? You will stay here and heal yourself and many others. And in that moment, I knew that was the absolute truth for me. All of the anxiety and depression just melted away and it was replaced by excitement and enthusiasm over my new life in the desert as a healer. And I also felt spontaneously healed in the moment. The person who ran down that mountain was not the same person who ran up it. With all of this excitement and enthusiasm over my new life in the desert as a healer, over the next two weeks, I felt as if I was following the guidance of spirit and being energetically guided to do this and then do that. That very morning, I drove to the nearest five-star resort. I applied for a job in wellness. I was hired on the spot and asked if I could start in two weeks. And as I walked out to the parking lot, I thought, this is surreal. <laughs> what have I done? Long story short, I started in two weeks in the field of wellness and I have never looked back. <laughs> That's incredible. What a story that is. I, I love, you know, I love stories like this where you cry out and say, I'm, I'm at the bottom. I need help. I need intervention divinely. And the beautiful part of that story is that you received it. Not everybody does. Sometimes we cry out and say, I'm at a crossroads. This is, I don't even know why this is happening or et cetera. And there's not even a cricket. Why do you think in that moment that you were so supported? I do believe in this concept of awakening from suffering and also surrendering to source. I was born quite connected to the other realms. I felt very psychic as a kid in such a way that I always saw like invisible beings. I had all of these um, invisible friends and they all had names. And I would tell my parents about these invisible people that were present in my reality. And I feel that I had the ability or gift to connect with the other side. Of course, that sort of faded away as I came into my identity as who I was as a child and then young adult. But in my adulthood, I felt like it opened back up for me. So I felt like I always kind of had that ability to uh, connect with what we might call interdimensional realms or even a higher source. And just with my depth of suffering in the moment and surrendering, this was gifted to me and I was able to sort of reconnect. I actually had a um, regression, a hypnotic regression with Lori McDonald, who is president of Opus, who actually assists people who've had paranormal experiences reveal what may have happened. And in this hypnosis, what was shown to us is that on that mountaintop, two beings surfaced from the inner earth. And they had a woman in between them that looked just like me. And they asked, can this woman walk into you? And I said, yes. And she walked into me and then looked out. And that made so much sense for me because it was as if I was merged with my higher self. I was aligned oh, with my higher self. So not self. a walk-in. This is not a walk-in situation. This is a higher self coming into you to be with you. Yeah, like a soul merge. Mm. God, that's beautiful. And now, you know, so it's amazing. So from there, is that where you started to being able to channel, to do automatic writing, psychic readings, tune into interdimensional planes, download advanced knowledge, like... <laughs> We're getting into that because that's we incredible. will get into that. 
but that was not what happened after this. Mm. Uh, after this, which happened in 1995, I dove into spirituality because prior to that, I hadn't been aware of any type of spirituality. My parents weren't religious. We never went to church. There was never any kind of spirituality introduced to us necessarily. So this was like a spiritual awakening that led me into what I call a Hay House brand of spirituality. So I started to tune into Louise Hay and Wayne Dyer just fell in love with Wayne Dyer and his teachings. And I had like my headset on my little earphones and I would walk through the desert and listen to all these books on audio and became very inspired by, you know, the spiritual path. Um, and so that was sort of that phase. And then I had a dark night of the soul upon which I awoke from in 2008 when I stepped on a Buddhist path and then really started to go deep into trance meditation and mantras and mudras and tantra. And that really allowed me to go so deep into meditation that I started to have like astral travel experiences and connecting to the other side. And ultimately to then automatic writing and channeling and writing my books. And yeah. So you did the work. I mean, you emotionally surrendered. <laughs> you went through what you went through. And then you you kept following up. I love that you have these kind of practices that everything led you to that. And that leading to this type of meditation mantra mudra open up all of this for you. That's very deep. And then as far as... The, making contact and disclosure, but really about making contact. Do you have personal experience of extraterrestrials? I do. Mm. And so I like to preface this with my father having had a missing time experience at the age of 18. Ah. And this happened out in a small town called Leader, Saskatchewan in Canada. And him and four buddies were driving down a dirt road one night after dinner. And they saw this big white light out in the field behind them, in front of them. So my father pulled over and him and his buddy leaned against the driver's side door to see if this light would pass them. And the next thing they knew, they were all sitting in the car looking at each other. And then they saw this white light race across the field and merge with a larger orange light which then took off into space. They drove to the nearest farmhouse and were banging on the door. Are you seeing these lights? And the woman who answered the door was furious that they were knocking on her door after midnight. And then they realized midnight, we just left the house at eight. We live right down the street. And they were like, ah, okay. We've had some kind of a missing time experience. And my father then the next day realized that he had a triangle shaped metallic object in his wrist and growing up he called it his alien chip and it was a gray raised triangular imprint on his wrist when we were old enough not to be freaked out by the story he told us this whole experience because this experience plagued him throughout his life. He was always so curious, like what happened in that incident and what is this chip? Or he called it his alien chip. But right after that experience, he was 18 years old. He was recruited by NCR. Living in the middle of nowhere, you know, somehow NCR, National Cash Register Company, recruited him. And ultimately he became a genius on the front lines of the emerging computer age. He was moved to Dayton, Ohio, right near Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And Wright-Patterson Air Force Base actually founded, James Patterson founded NCR. <laughs> and so they were very intricately involved. My father was German speaking and on Sunday nights, these German men would come to our house and they would speak in German and they would pour over these plans. It was only later that I became aware of Project Paperclip, 
and really feel that my father from the, you know, abduction experience, from the, you know, chip implant to then ultimately working at NCR with Wright Patterson Air Force Base and these German men possibly involved with Project Paperclip all kind of set the stage <laughs> for then my later experiences with the paranormal. And then just so I check in, your dad never was hypnotized? He never went through an abduction hypnosis? No, he wouldn't let anybody touch his chip. He used to hold it like this. And he didn't believe in mm, like spirituality. He believed in UFOs and extraterrestrial beings and would say things to me like, you know that the aliens are us coming back from the future. And this is like 25 years ago when this kind of stuff wasn't really talked about. And he would tell me stuff like this. And even with my father, we had some really interesting paranormal experiences together. <laughs> and your experience, what was yours? So the most significant experience that I ever had was a missing time experience here in Sedona. And I had two friends staying at my house and all three of us were talking about how we felt very connected to the Arcturians, this alien race from the star Arcturus. And so we decided that we would try to call in these Arcturians. I joke around, this is what we do at night in Sedona. <laughs> so me and these two friends decided to stand in my living room and all three hold hands and call upon the Arcturians to have more direct contact, something you know physical and tangible. And so then we went out on my back deck, which is an upper deck. As soon as we walked out on my back deck, the lights on the deck went on, which for one, you can only turn on the deck lights from the inside panel. And so we were like, okay, whoa, what's happening? And then we all felt dizzy. My friend Megan grabbed the handrail and she goes, whoa, I feel dizzy. And I did too. So I grabbed the handrail. There was a huge explosion of white light on the horizon. And then we noticed that the motion detectors on the stairwell leading up to the upper deck were going off as if someone was walking up the stairwell, but we didn't see anybody. And it was literally as if one moment we're looking at the stairwell and the motion detectors going off. And the next moment I turn to them and I'm like, gosh, I'm cold. Why are we still out here? And then we walked into the house, sat down on the couches, were like disoriented and trying to make conversation, but at the same time we were exhausted. So I said to them, I'm going to bed. When I went in the kitchen and turned my phone over, it said 1240. And I was shocked because we had gone out on the deck right after dinner around eight o'clock. We were so exhausted. I just went into the bed. I fell onto the bed fast asleep, woke up the next day and was nauseated still felt disoriented, went into the kitchen, looked at the coffee pot, was like, no way. I just poured some water and was sipping on my water. My friends came out from their bedrooms. They looked all disoriented. They looked green and nauseous too. And we were just sitting there like staring into space, stunned. We weren't like, yay, oh my God, do you think we were taken? It wasn't like that at all. We were just kind of stunned you know, not really knowing what to think. And plus we didn't feel well. It was only later in the afternoon that we started to kind of feel better and kind of explore what may have happened. But I went to a psychic here in Sedona and before I was even seated in her chair, she started to tune in to what happened to me and my friends. Mm. And she said that a pod ship came down in, an invis in, in like an invisibility shield and that three Arcturians got out, walked up the stairwell, took each one of us by the hand, 
back down onto the pod ship, which then went up into a larger mothership. And that there, we were greeted by the Arcturians. We were shown around the craft. And then we went through a process of being downloaded with advanced knowledge, wisdom, skills, mm -hmm. abilities before being returned. It wasn't long after that, that I started to grab paper, pen, poster board, markers, whatever I could find and draw circles. And the circle would have 12 circles around it. And each of these circles represented a dimension. I was very aware that these were dimensions and that they each had a different mm, essence about them. I knew that the first dimension was source consciousness. The second dimension was where creation came into being through the platonic solids, the elements, that the third dimension was the first incarnational realm. And that there I was Suzanne as an author, speaker, what have you. Then in the fourth dimension was the astral realm and who I was there. In the fifth dimension, I was a Pleiadian. In the sixth, I was an Arcturian. In the seventh, I was a Syrian. In the eighth, I was Cassiopeian. In the ninth, I was Lyran. In the tenth, I was an Orion. In the eleventh, I was Andromedan. And in the twelfth, that is like the eternal realm where your soul is now in its perfect divine blueprint. And at the 13th was infinity. So 12 represented eternity, 13 represented infinity. And this is just all downloaded like. Phew. And then I realized I could experience myself as who I was being with my intention in any one of these dimensions. And then ultimately I realized I could do it for other people as well. When you describe this, all these concurrent circles, and you're calling it multidimensionality. So you're saying that all of this exists at once, right now, as is. There's Absolutely. you here, there's you, the Pleiadian, the Cassiopeian, the Lyran, et cetera. There's the connect the all that is, et cetera. And so, Besides being able to draw that, have you experienced it? Have you been able to be, it's not linear, there's nothing linear about it, but unilaterally involved somehow or recognizing all of them at once? Yes, and so it's a matter of where you focus your attention with intention. <laughs> and so in, a meditative state, I can set an intention to enter into that avatar consciousness of who I am being as a Pleiadian or as an Arcturian. And as such, it's as if I can become that avatar. I can step into that aspect of who I am being and experience myself there as that being. That's amazing. And is that where you get your advanced knowledge from? Just tapping into those? Yes. And so now that I have had the experience of a soul reunion with these other aspects of myself, it has allowed me to become a multi-dimensional being mm -hmm. and stream consciousness mm -hmm. with these other aspects of myself. That's awesome. And in that way, then I can share consciousness. And yes, it has definitely given me access to more advanced intelligence, knowledge, wisdom, and certainly more advanced gifts, skills, and abilities, all so that I can be of higher service 
to the yeah. awakening and ascension of humanity. That's amazing at the right time, <laughs> boy. And you know, <laughs> I am driven to ask you this question because my logic is like, mm? but I'm, I'd have to trust that it's saying, can you share some wisdom? Can you share some advanced knowledge with us? Something we've never heard anywhere. I would love some illumination from you. You can go there, wherever there is. <laughs> And so what I feel drawn to bring forth for one is that there is an infinite field of pure consciousness. And it is within this infinite field of pure love that creation emerges. Creation emerges from infinity into a realm called eternity because the one great self needed a beginning a place to start creating however infinity flows into eternity so it is sourced by the infinite and thus expands into eternity you see and so then you get this eternal realm at the center of creation, this perfect central universe, if you will. It is in this central universe that everything is in its divine perfection. All things and beings created in their perfect divine blueprint. This is an existential realm that was created for the one great self to know thyself through creation, through existing. But you see in this existential state, these beings just are, they are being and existing. But even these beings as expressions of the one great self had a desire to know thyself in a different way. And so as such, they projected a mental construct called space-time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in this mental construct of space-time, timelines and dimensions into which they could mentally project holographic fractals of themselves. And as such, behind the scenes, view, witness all of these incarnations all unfolding all at once in the eternal now moment. Because you see from the perspective of the eternal soul, everything is happening in one eternal now moment. Time is an illusion for those in space time experiences, but necessary for an experience that has a beginning and an ending, a timeline within which we can do you see, and so this is an experiential aspect of ourselves and a way to know thyself through experience and doing. But the source is our source self as our eternal soul who is existing and being in the eternal now moment. And is there a connection here with DNA and DNA activation? Yes, and so... We then, as an holographic avatar here in this present moment, are only a fractal of who we are in wholeness. And so as holograms work, every holographic fractal still contains the whole, but we are a fractal. And so we only have a fraction of our DNA activated for this 3D experience. Only a certain percentage of our brain is online in order so that we can have this 3D experience as a third dimensional being in this particular reality. Mm. Does that make sense? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so 5D, and co-creating a new earth, which is what we're all in the midst of, what is needed for that? What, 
especially advanced knowledge, because I think we're, you know, sort of doing the best we can with something that feels like this, but there is a much bigger, more expansive matrix of what's happening. What, so what can you offer about that? So certainly advancing and evolving for a shift into higher consciousness, stepping into that intention to consciously live in higher consciousness, to um, expand into a higher way of living and being intentionally. So it's all about you know, intentionally creating meaningful experiences and consciously evolving toward more enlightened ones. Certainly experiences of soul merging with more advanced and evolved aspects of yourself will ignite dormant DNA because you are now merging with an aspect of yourself who has more DNA activated. And so what I saw in this vision, because I had the question of why do we only have 10% of our brain online and only 4% of our DNA activated? What's happening with the rest? Why is it dormant? And it was so that we could fully be in this third dimensional experience as just 10% of ourselves. However, when we move into the next dimension, 20 more percent comes online and in the fifth dimension 30 and in the sixth 40 and what i realized is when you get to 12 now you have 100 percent, and that's where we're whole perfect and complete mm. so i was you know thrilled to see that the mathematics of that even work out as the third dimension being the first incarnational plane where we're 10 percent, but by the time we get to 12 we're 100 percent and so when you soul merge with an aspect of yourself that has 30, 40% online, then it brings more of your brain online and it activates the dormant DNA strands within you. And of course, you also become a greater version of yourself with access to more advanced knowledge, wisdom, the spiritual gifts that allow you to access the Akasha the Akashic field. And so this is why I do multidimensional soul reunions and DNA activations for people. Oh, what does that look like? What is that? How does that manifest when you do that? So we go into a agreement where I get permission from their source self who is projecting their avatars in these different timelines and dimensions so that I can see through the eyes of their eternal soul who they are being in these different timelines and dimensions. I bring my client into a trance state where they themselves are able to interactively engage in this soul merge experience Oftentimes, they are telling me who they are becoming, who they are experiencing themselves as in this other dimension that they have now stepped into. And so through a process of bringing them into this trance state and then a, them sort of Mm. realizing that they have found themselves in an entirely different landscape and then realizing that here they are a different being and they can even reveal what they look like, who they are, where they're at, what they're doing. That is the most ideal outcome. If they are unable to experience themselves as who they are being, I am also witnessing that and I can then guide them into that experience where then they may find themselves there. This experience results 
in a soul merge. So now they are streaming consciousness with this other soul aspect. You see, that's what's important is to uh, activate the pineal gland from which they send and receive streams of consciousness through their third eye so that we are establishing a stream of consciousness between them and this other soul aspect who has agreed to this. You see, the source self will only make those soul merge connections if it is mutually beneficial. So the source self will guide the soul reunion in such a way that the reunion will be deemed as mutually beneficial for both soul aspects because the source self has the higher perspective of which soul merge will be mutually beneficial. And so then it guides that soul merge in the way that the my client would then experience themselves as this other aspect. And this other aspect would also become aware that they are having a soul merge experience with this client and then in that connection there's now a transmission of consciousness streaming between them and then through the shared consciousness these codes are transmitted and imprinted upon the being receiving and so as these codes are downloaded through the third eye into the pineal gland then they can be transmitted into the central nervous system, activating the dormant DNA in every cell of their being as they are encoded with higher consciousness. Wow. That sounds like an incredible experience. I'm like, <laughs> really? That's divine. Is Does everybody succeed who comes to you, whether they can tap into that or you help them tap into it? Does everybody um, have the ability in the end to connect with this other piece of them, so to speak, and have that coding take place and all that streaming. I have never had someone say that they didn't experience an energetic transmission or experience now resonating at a higher frequency um, having visions of this other aspect of who they were being. Um, there's always a theme that runs through all of the incarnations, all of the avatars that the source self is projecting because the source self itself has an eternal soul essence, a uniqueness, right? And so they often resonate with who this other aspect is and where they're at and what they're doing because it's familiar. You see, it's another, it's another uh, aspect of themselves. You know, I often say it's you, it's all you, right? So to recognize and have a sense of familiarity mm -hmm. and also during the experience, you know, what is being revealed whether they're revealing it or I'm giving them some assistance or guidance in revealing it, they experience it on some levels, many levels. Um, there's uh, visions and colors and just and, and the energetic experience that they're having. So yeah. often, you know, times they come out, wow, you know, I really felt that or, you know, I really experienced who I was being. I can feel that I'm vibrating at a higher frequency already. And, you know, then of course the code in printing takes time to assimilate, to integrate. And so this is why I would only do like a fifth dimensional soul merge, you know, and then after they take time to integrate, to encode, to experience, you know, themselves becoming more advanced and these gifts and abilities coming online before I would then do another session where, you know, now we could go into, say, the seventh dimension. 
and then, you know, proceed um, to awaken more dormant DNA and bring more brain, more of the brain online. But I get to hear the stories then in the second session about all of the things that they realize now that they can do. It's like, like what? They, can you give some examples? Like unplugging from the matrix is a good example. Having this sense of like blowing the lid off this 3D cube mm. and expanding into limitlessness. Oh, wow. <clears throat> it's like no longer being trapped within the limitations of this 3D matrix. It's like becoming suddenly aware that they have unlimited potential to do, be, have anything they desire because they are this multidimensional being. And so also they seem more filled with excitement, enthusiasm, motivation, self-confidence to pursue their passions and just to step into, you know, the power of who they are as a powerful being now more ignited and with more brain capacity. <laughs> so your percentages. Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. So I, my brain is like this question, this question, let me start here. The idea of asking for help, of inviting in, I'm very fascinated by that. And I'd like to know how can somebody do that to actually create that connection? One type of connection obviously is like what you and your girlfriends experience, very powerful. You had a, a plan to bring in the Octurians, you went out, you held hands and things happened, right? It happened. And who knows, maybe you were the ultimate conduit because of your father, your history and having lost, that was your lost time or not. And then there's also just saying to the divine, benevolent beings that we're connected with from other races and universes, because I use all of that, you know, the angels, the guides, <laughs> the benevolent beings really uh, throughout the universes. And so how can we do that to actually have a really significant connection? Like this question feels so important to me because I've wanted this for so long, like it's moving me. I've wanted this for so long and I've called out for so long. And it's like, you know, dr thrumming the little nails, like, are you there? Can you respond? I'm so open. I feel so open. Can you talk about that? Yes, I think it's the asking, the surrendering, the giving permission. I always say benevolent beings too. <laughs> I make it very clear. Only the benevolent loving soul galactic family members. <laughs> yes. And of course you would challenge anything in the Christ light and um, only with the most sincere intention of this contact serving the highest good for all but you know declaring all that with your pure intentions and then just knowing that your request has gone out into the universe and you know we don't always know what serves the highest good for all or what may even serve our own highest good, but our higher selves do, our source self does. And so we just trust that that contact will occur in the way it is meant to occur at the time that's most beneficial for all. Mm. And paranormal and supernatural how do you work in those realms? What is your experience there? 
And so I do live here in <laughs> the vortex of Sedona. And I offer personal retreats where people come to Sedona and I do two to four day retreats where we go out on to the land into these powerful portals throughout Sedona. And here in these spinning portals, in these spiraling fields where everything inside the vortex is literally vibrating at a higher frequency. You can imagine the spinning, right? It's like the electrons are spinning around the nucleus of the atoms faster and we're, you know, atomic molecular beings. And so we feel that higher vibrational frequency, which elevates us, transcends us into a higher spectrum of perception, of experience. You see, because each one of these dimensions are within a certain spectrum of perception. I mean, we know this, that, you know, we can't see beyond a certain spectrum. We know the other spectrum is there, but we have to have special equipment, you know, to see beyond it. And so when we start to experience beyond the 3D spectrum of perception, say people who have a sixth sense, people who can see spirit beings, people who can uh, have experiences of um, seeing beyond the third dimension. This is going beyond the 3D spectrum, right? Which vibrates at a certain vibrational resonance. And once you go beyond that, then you can start to perceive in the fourth dimension, even beyond that, the fifth dimension. And so since it is vibrational resonance, when you're in this really high vibrational frequency of the spiraling vortex, it transports you into this higher plane of awareness where you can have interdimensional experiences. And so this is what I guide people into during these journeys in the vortex where now you can expand your mind, you can expand your consciousness and have these interdimensional experiences. Wow. And so what, what have you experienced as far as the paranormal and the supernatural? And so experiences, for instance, of this <laughs> crystal temple city of light coming into its higher vibrational expression of what it once was as a crystal temple city. So Sedona herself, an ancient crystal temple city that may very well have been part of ancient Atlantis, which was always depicted as an underwater advanced civilization with crystal temples. Sedona was under the sea 300 million years ago. And when she was under the sea, may very well have been crystal temples. When she emerged from the sea, gathered layer upon layer upon layer of rust, which oxidized as iron oxide, a form of rust. And so geologically, it's not impossible to imagine that these red rock formations, which are embedded with crystal, geologists have confirmed that there's a crystalline basement under all of Sedona, underneath this red rock iron oxide, and you can walk around Sedona and clearly see crystal sticking up out of the red rock in many locations. It's very visible. And so I love to take people to those sites because they look down at the ground and they see quartz crystal, you know, sticking up out of the red rock. And so then you see, as we are out in the vortex, in this crystal city of light, we can then tune into the higher vibrational resonance of this crystal temple city and see it for what 
it is in a higher dimension from a higher dimensional perspective. Does that make sense? Yes, it really does. And so <laughs> this is so this is an experience you had going inside and allowing all of this to be revealed to you. That's what you're saying? And myself and others who have intentionally projected their consciousness into these red rock formations. And with that ability within the high vibrational vortex to see interdimensionally, to actually view these red rocks as what they are and project your consciousness into these crystal temples to then see from a higher dimensional perspective what is alive and well in a temple city. You see, it's another um, reality. It's a parallel reality that is unfolding. Even though, you know, we're saying, oh, in the ancient past, you know, now we're putting time into it. But if you can step into timelessness and see things in the eternal now, then it's all unfolding now. And that's why, like, I do past life regressions. The reason that I can watch the movie of your past life, or I can tune you into the movie of your past life, most of my clients in their trance state, they tell me where they're at, who they're being, what they're doing, right? Because we've stepped into timelessness. Mm. And this movie is happening now. You see, so that's why we can watch it or actually find ourselves in it, playing a role in that movie because it's playing. Does that make sense? Yes, of course. Yeah, I've been regressed, so I understand that. Uh, oh, good. Yes. Amazing. And and so tell people a little bit more. You were alluding, I know the work you do, there's a lot of privates, but there's also the group situations so you've got some Sedona Ascension retreats, annual retreats, also personal retreats. Will you talk about those? Oh, thanks for asking, Deb. And I hope you can come out and enjoy that. Um, so for my personal retreats, I invite either, you know, well, people reach out to me and express their interest in either coming alone for a private retreat or with a group of people. And so what that looks like is when they come to Sedona, we do a variety of outdoor journeys into these vortex sites where I bring my crystal bowls, my Tibetan singing bowls. I do drumming, chanting. We burn sage if we're permitted to. Um, and so in these experiences, then I tune them into the vortex and um, we do a variety of different spiritual journeys. Um, some shamanic in nature, some uh, Native American inspired. Um, we'll go to the water's edge and do a rebirth ceremony in the water um, for renewal. And then we also do indoor sessions at a spiritual center here in Sedona. So now I take them indoors and we do any number of uh, different energetic healing sessions. Uh, intuitive reading sessions. And so their journey here is a combination of outdoor and indoor experiences. Mm, sounds magnificent. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much for everything you've shared and uh, for allowing yourself to just open up your realm to us to really have that experience and get that knowledge. And I'm curious here at the end, this is Dare to Dream. So Suzanne Ross, what do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams? There is no future we know, but what <laughs> is the next thing you'd like to create dream-wise or goal-wise? Thank you for asking that. Well, I'm in the process of dreaming into manifestation, <laughs> this March, 2023 event that I'm having here in Sedona at the Sedona Performing Arts Center. And this, I've been doing events twice a year here in Sedona for the last eight years. This is my 15th event 
but this one is bigger than better than ever before. This venue seats 750 people and we have just amazing keynote speakers like Paul Selig, William Henry, Matt Kahn, Maureen St. Germain, Michael Jaco. I mean, I could go on. You can go to the website and check it out at SedonaAscensionRetreats.com. But I just want to invite everybody and I want to give them a coupon code, DEB10, in order so that they can then have a special Dare to Dream um, discount. In fact, as I'm saying that, excuse me, someone I know already has Deb 10. So I'll let you pick your own discount code, my dear. How about Dare? Dare 10. Dare 10. Perfect. So D C R E 10. And that'll give your fans and followers a 10% discount. And you'll get a nice little bonus from that too, sweet dear, for allowing me the time to present that. <laughs> yes. And remind us what I, I would like the, I'm going to put this in the show notes. What was the URL again, specifically for the uh -huh. retreats? For this event, it's Sedona Ascension Retreats.com. And it's also on my own personal site, which is Suzanne Ross Transcendence.com. There you'll find my books, sessions, and personal retreats. Okay, that's beautiful. And um, is there any ritual, any practice you do every day that you would recommend that really keeps you centered, grounded, healthy, and all of that? Thank you for asking. Yes, I have one particular practice that I just love to do. I've created a little solar circle where outdoors where I stand and it's got 12 stones, right? And I'm the 13th in the center. And I look into the sun and I do an ancient Hindu sun mantra where I say a particular um, mantra. And it is Om Ah Hum Vajra Guru Pima Siddhi Hum. Om Ahum Vajra Guru Pima Siddhi Hum. The practice is that you imagine the solar disk like a clock, but one is at the top. And you say the mantra at each number, one through 12. And then you spiral into the center and say it for the 13th. You're honoring the sun. The sun is a divine portal through which divine consciousness flows in from the great central sun at the core of creation. So you're opening to receive divine consciousness. You're also opening to be downloaded with creation codes and also receiving supercharged encoded photonic light through the sun. And so you're honoring the sun and I call it my manifestation station. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. Well. I love this. I've heard, I've heard pieces of this before. Uh, never that mantra um, to be done in conjunction. So this is a great one to send people away with. Thank you for being on the show today. Thank you for being you and for the energy you brought. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being you, Deb. I so appreciate being on and I can't wait to meet you in person and hope you can come to Sedona. Beautiful. Uh, and I end today's show with this quote, which is, how cool is it that the same God who created mountains and oceans and galaxies looked at you and they thought the world needed one of you too. Subscribe to this Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger number one transformation conversation podcast. If you're loving what you hear and you'd like to see us, go to YouTube, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, and you can watch this. Please subscribe and like. When you guys comment, you know I read them all. Next week on the show, Serena Wright Taylor will be here. I'm excited about that. She's a Vedic astrologer and a UFO researcher. Thank you for joining us today on Dare to Dream. If you want your free gift, go to debbie-dashinger.com slash gift and learn how you can become way more visible in your life and in your business. Have a beautiful day and Dare 10 for your discount at sedonaascensionretreats.com.